Go ahead. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's a warm, sunny day here in Virginia, and we want to tell you what we've been up to, some of our favorite things. We have here a cannon arrangement. I'll start with the sighting system. The sight is a Zeiss World War II era anti-aircraft, uh, anti-tank sight. Um, and it's held in place through a system of mounts that we have here and held down by some industrial strength radiator clamps that we have put together. Uh, we basically use this sight to, to sight the cannon. It's based on the, it's the pattern of the British 7-pound rifled mountain gun. It has, uh, as we'll see in a moment, three groove rifling. It has a flash hole here and yeah. a system of sighting here. And here is the three groove rifling. Now the three groove That's rifling. The vent back here, isn't it? Vent. This is the vent hole where we put the fuse, okay. and there was a sighting system that went in here. We have modified that for this carriage, which we'll get to in a moment. But it does have this lovely uh, engraved uh, sh shield of arms or coat of arms of Afghanistan written in the local language. It really is quite nice. We call this rust, the folks at the Antiques Roadshow call it patina. Any way you cut the cake, it's a nice tube. It has three groove rifling, and there, here they are. There are grooves at one here, one here, and one here, and they're meant to match up with this particular pre projectile. This projectile, which we have remanufactured, uh, is made out of uh, kirksite, which is a, uh, this particular one, excuse me, is made out of zinc. Uh, it weighs about eight and a half, nine pounds, and these three grooves rifling just fit right in there very nicely. So when it comes out, it's, it's, it's spinning. We have modified this by putting the uh, case of a 40 millimeter um, uh, grenade launcher in here just to, to lighten the end so that we have more weight in the front. Now the carriage itself is a U.S. naval carriage. Uh, it was used for a breech loading three pound, sorry, a breech loading rifle and it was manufactured in about 1880. In fact, it's got some of the uh, markings on here of the Washington Naval Yard. Uh, we have modified the carriage to uh, take this particular elevation device. Uh, this has not worked out real well because it's not, not tight enough. But uh, we spent most of yesterday, a wet, rainy day up in the Virginia Hills, shooting this. We fired this gun 11 times. We recovered all of the cartridges, or else we know where they are. They're in the mud. And it's just the most fun you can have with uh, your pants on, I guess you would say. Uh, it, uh, we, we are going to go back because we didn't get um, real good accuracy with it. We think possibly the, the projectiles are, are back heavy. These are uh, brakes, aren't they, Ed? This is a system of braking. Uh, when you get the gun loaded and ready to shoot, you tighten these down, and it helps. With, and as the gun recoils back, these brakes tighten up. And it kind of maintains and minimizes. Can you show them how they turn? Hmm? Can you show them how they turn? They turn. This knob turns here. I'm not sure I can do that. Here, like this. This knob turns. And as, as it turns, it tightens up this, this shaft right here. So it's tight there. It's tight now. When and it then, recoils, it gets tighter. Right? And when it recoils, it gets tighter. And it, so it kind of minimizes the recoil. And then as it rolls forward, it, 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 it uh, loosens itself. We also had to make some modifications on the trunnions. The, um, we made a collar here with a spacer because the original uh, U.S. Navy gun was wider than this and also had larger trunnions, so we had to make a, an adapter trunnion cap and a spacer. But uh, it did shoot well. Um, our accuracy leaves something to be desired, and we think that's a function of our projectile that we're using. It has nothing to do with the gunner or anything like that. That Smile when you say that. Smile. Smile. There we go. So uh, we'll be uh, getting back to you on this one after we make some battlefield modifications. And uh, but it is a great way to spend a hot summer. Uh, and we're going to be going out again next week and with phase two of our experiments. That's it for now. Thanks, Ed.